Good morning, everybody. Morning. I'm here to talk to you today about PC cooling technologies. I have a little content overview for you all. So today I'm going to talk about uh, four different types of cooling. We have passive air cooling, we've got active air cooling, and uh, liquid cooling and immersion cooling. And after that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the importance of keeping your system cool. So first, we've got passive air cooling. That typically consists of a relatively large heat sink and it's going to have a low noise level because there's no fans or anything and it's cooled by the surface area of the heat sink um, being cooled passively by the air that moves through it via convection. And it's going to be relatively cheap because it's only going to be 10 to 20 dollars for a little heat sink. Um, when I say little but they're actually usually pretty big for passive air cooling and Really only pretty low performance machines can utilize this effectively, it's not really used at all anymore. After that we've got active air cooling, which uses fans of many different sizes. We've got 40, 60, 80, 92, 120, 140 millimeter fans most commonly. And that's again going to have heat sinks and they're typically going to be made of copper or aluminum. The copper is going to be your higher performance heat sinks, but it's going to be a little more expensive than the aluminum is. And they are going to be noisy. You can configure your motherboard or a fan controller to help with the noise a little, and so the fans only run as hard as they need to. But for the most part, it's, it's going to be pretty loud. And an active cooling system can range anywhere from around $20 to over $100, depending on the materials used and the number of fans, and you know, if you're using like RGB fans or anything like that. It's a relatively small price jump for a lot better Game. And after that, you've got the piezoelectric pump, which is two nickel discs that are connected on either side to a sliver of piezoelectric ceramics, and they use vibrations to push air through the case. And they use a lot less electricity than typical uh, active air cooling methods do. Kind of a little visualization on that. via this little diaphragm-like thing here in the air gates. And then after that we've got liquid cooling which is very, very effective and it can be either passive or active and the downsides to these are they, they can be pretty complex. They've got a lot of hoses and whatnot that you have to install on your system. And these are mainly used for overclocking because of how good they are at keeping your system cool. And for this I do have a little video of somebody installing an all-in-one cooler. And I am sure that you already know what I'm going to say, but our 2120 millimeter fans will act as an exhaust, simply meaning that they are going to evacuate the hot air outside of our case. <laughs> Exhausting fan and the back of the radiator. Take your time. I know this is delicate. You do not want to screw directly inside the radiator and find yourself with an irreparable leak. So, again, take your time. Alright, 
last step of this video. We are going to secure the water pump slash water block onto the LJ2011 front plate. As you remember, in the very first stage of this video, we did install the screw adapters. Now we are simply going to fit in the water pump directly onto them. First, make sure to remove the plastic protection shield out of the water block. Worth noting, the manufacturer has already applied a thin layer of thermal compound. So basically we can just go ahead and assemble the water block slash pump onto our CPU front plate. Make sure to align the water block bracket and the LGA screw adapters, make them slide in and secure the bowl with the provided holes. As you tighten them, you want to make sure that an equal pressure is applied on every corner of the CPU front plate. That will ensure that there is a complete adherence between the CPU thermal shield and the copper plate of our water block. There's some pros and cons to this. It's, it's very, very effective for overclocking. It's very thermally conductive. And the cons of this is that it's, it's like I said, it's a pretty complex system. And if you have any leaks or anything, it's, it could potentially screw your system up quite a bit. And the system also costs a little bit more just to get in place to begin with. Um, some of it could run $50 to $100 for the all-in-one cooler, which is going to be the simplest method of doing it. but also generally only covers your CPU. But the full liquid cooling kit's gonna run about $150 to $300, which is quite a big price jump, but it is hugely different in performance. Then after that, we have some immersion cooling, which is where your system is completely immersed in liquid. <clears throat> this liquid's usually a type of mineral oil or other oil. It's kind of an extreme cooling solution, and for those who want a unique look, is it look pretty cool. I've seen them in fish tanks and stuff like that. And it's a more eco-friendly solution as there's no moving parts, no power needed, it's just all a passive system. And this shows how it works here. Um, the heat generated boils the liquid pretty much instantly and then it evaporates and condenses onto a coil which then falls back down and the cycle just repeats itself. And I have a little showing it what that looks like. As you can see, it's boiling it instantly, and this also really shows how hot these CPUs can get. <clears throat> and this is a higher end system. But yeah, that just kind of shows how they how it burns. Cooling is very, very important because without that, you could easily damage just about anything. Like, if you don't have any kind of cooling on your processor and you start your computer, it's pretty much instantly going to burn up and the system's going to be unusable and you're going to have to buy a new one. And to keep it running smoothly and stably for as long as possible, you want to make sure everything has its temperature needs met. And 
it's okay to overdo something like that just because of how important it really is. And if you overdo it too much, you can always overclock it a little bit. And that's pretty much it for my presentation today. Anybody have any more questions or anything? All right. Thank you all.